It is officially power tour time. Between myself, my wife Jessica, my friend Chad and Haley, we're gonna be taking three classic cars on this epic journey. Five cities, five days, over a thousand miles of cruising, the back roads of the good old US of A. I've got a couple small things to finish up. Well, basically on all three rides. And then we've got to see if all three are gonna make it 250 miles to Atlanta, Georgia for the start of the power tour. Let's jump in. Keith? first. Oh boy, where's my list? Well, the three rides we decided to take is, of course, the 1966 C10 up on the lift here known as Longmire. It's my wife's truck. She adores it and absolutely loves it. That being said, I think I'm going to be piloting the truck for the most part because she has also fallen in love with a 1981 Buick Regal, now known as the Dew Car. It's a street legal stock car. It's a Darrell Waltrip tribute, I guess you could say. Her and Haley are going to be driving that car. I'm going to be driving Longmire for the most part. And my friend Chad is going to be driving the Cat Farm Crew Cab. I think that should be pretty fun. I'm trying to give my friends the AC. You know what I mean? But we might be switching around and I'm not sure. This is on the lift because quite frankly, I'm really lazy and it was already here. And I've got a to-do list I've been chewing on for a while here. At minimum, I've got to fix the shock that's hanging off. We've got to replace the tail light that According to me, is fixed. I put red tape over it, but Jessica says that might not fly. Well, I'll take a look at that. And might mod the shifter. That's probably, you know, quick little lightning staff action there. And if I'm super ambitious, we might put a digital cooling fan because this does not have a shroud and it does get hot idling, which you do a lot of in Hot Rod Power Tour, especially if you get in a traffic jam. You could be sitting 30, 40 minutes in traffic through all these small towns. Then we'll move on to, I don't know, we'll say the crew cab. I've got a list for that one as well. So let's take a look at the shock here. So this truck is on bags, as you guys know. And this one here has a shock relocation thing. It's kind of a poor design because this is basically just created a lever and you can see this one's bending as well. But the angleization for the shock travel, you can't get it in. So this is just part of the kit. Over on this side, it just rapid unscheduled disassembly. I'm not, that's not how it's supposed to look. And luckily it's just kind of pinned itself into this area here. And quite honestly, I don't know how long it's been like that. I drove this truck from Minnesota to Tennessee like that. And I've also put another five, 600 miles with the EFI on until I discovered this. So it's wedged in there good and still kind of acting like a shock. Honestly, you can't really tell, but I just don't want this to create big issues, you know, on the road. One of the reasons being is this is a very hard truck to work on because when the bags are aired all the way up, which they are, there's not a lot of room to get jacks or jack stands or, you know, bellies under here. So I'm gonna bring the air jack, probably put it here, lift this up as high as I can so I can try to break this shock free, and then we'll start scanning our peepers on a quick fix for power to her to get that shock hooked back up. So here's what I'm thinking. We got her lifted up, got some separation. Why couldn't a guy, just for temporarily, permanently, run a piece of like all thread through here? Weld it here, weld it there, weld it here, weld it there. Weld it here, weld it there, weld it here. And that, wait a second, why is this one lying on? Oh, I don't think it's supposed to go there, maybe. And then, uh, well, it seems like it wants to. I might have to look at this a little bit, because that one is acting like it wants to line up. with the inside tab. Hmm. 
Huh. I'm gonna have to duplicate the other side. Trust the kit. So I'll lower this down. We can run some all thread through, weld it, and then put a nut and a washer on it and we should be good, right? Sure, I don't, look, we're just, we're wagging it. Well, I'm on plan, I don't know, F, subsection 3B. Here's what I'm thinking. Let's take a standard bolt, mm -hmm. weld the nut here, okay? And that's gonna do a couple things. One, it's gonna make it serviceable more easily here because we just run the bolt in and out instead of having the stud. Also, we're gonna have this smooth shank here, which is gonna better complement this here bushing and the shock, right? Instead of having the threads in there, chewing that up and potentially, well, just wallering it out. And then all we gotta do is put a big old washer on here, run this through there, run it in the nut, tighten it down, and theoretically, should be okay. We just can't over tighten it and squeeze these ears up. I'm gonna see if I have any hardware. Maybe I got a little piece of pipe or something I could put in there to space that out, but I'm not sure. This little quick fix should get us down the road at least far enough for the power tour. Well, it kind of looks like Stevie Wonder welded that in the dark of night, but it's in there and it's hot. So now we should be able to bring this out. I'll go find a big washer, probably two of them actually, and uh, we'll snug this thing up and we'll be able to cross shock off the list. Well, it's not pretty, but it's functional. You know, if, if it works, is it a dumb idea, basically? It is taunt. It's doing shock things. We can officially cross that off. Well, the guy picked up some new lenses for the truck here and gaskets and even the screws. I also ordered the trim rings here, but they haven't shown up yet. So this is the one that came out of it. I just snipped this with a trailer. Just the tail end when it was turning around. Didn't get into the body or the box, thankfully, but really hammered the trim ring here kids went over to uh, Hubcap Hills and we got this one out of lawsuit. So we'll put this one in, ground it, put the new lens and gasket in, and then check it make sure it's operating correctly and then I guess that should be the Jessica standards. I don't It's crazy what a new lens will do for the looks of a rig. Chad's pulling the lights on. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, officially legal. Buddy Chad's patching up the vacuum line right now. We're gonna quick tackle the shifter in this. We've decided to keep the beer tap handle and put it something like that. Just lower for Jessica. Uh, something that she can manage a little bit easier. We're gonna do that as quickly as possible because we feel like, thanks to Chad's uh, reasoning, the cooling fan is really the most important thing out of all of this and I've just kind of been procrastinating. So we should probably get to that pretty soon and decide if we're gonna delete on the mechanical and put in the digital or if we're gonna to try to put the digital on the front side and make it a pusher instead of a puller as an ancillary so we have double cooling That'll be a little bit more work, but probably technically the correct way. So that's not going to happen, most likely. But I have the trigger wire here. We'd have to put a relay in, a little bit more wiring. But it can happen pretty quickly. But for now, going to get the death wheel out, chop this old shifter off, and get the welding. Chad's got the fans snuck in here. We had to take the mechanical off with the spacer and he 
got it slid in. Well, there's some worry about taking out, the, I was just gonna hack these out, but he has a really good point. There's really nothing holding this <laughs> front end together, so to speak. So we had the really good idea of just scooting it over because it doesn't really matter as long as it's pulling air through any of the surface or cores, it's helping out. So it's fitting in there. He's just got to somehow get those in there, tie it down. While he's doing that, I'm mounting the relay. It's hard to see. Down under the battery in there, it's an MSD uh, two-channel relay. And this is a wire that I pre-ran off the sniper for fan control, just hoping that I could get to this point and get this fan done. And then we just gotta run aground, we gotta run our main power, we gotta ground the fan and run power over the fan from the relay. And then we just gotta program the temperature in the handheld for the Holly sniper. And then we should have a secondary backup fan. And the idea here is if we get up to, oh, I don't know, 191.8 degrees and rising, we can, kick that thing on this does just fine if you're cruising or even just you know going slowish in traffic but once you stand still and there's not wind moving through this it does get hot well we're making progress here fans all dialed in got everything wired up got the relay in went ahead and tested it uh, turned the holly sniper down to uh, I think it was like 80 or something just to test it, fan kicked on, everything's good there. Set it to 195, turns off at 190 for now. Other friend Chad, not the other Chad, or the other Chad showed up. Uh, for Power Tour, boys are playing with RC cars. And we're fixing to uh, swap out these gauges. Shifter's done, that turned out great. A lot shorter throw. Be a lot more fun to drive, easier to drive. Uh, Chad brought me this. So, these aren't working, remember? Because we're using the holly over there. So they're just redundant and kind of gaudy. I like the wood grain, but we're gonna take these three out. And, well actually, we might even use this old school gauge. Uh, but I, I got a single ring for this. And we're gonna get rid of this darned plastic line. I tell you fellers and fellas all the time, those lines break, they get brittle, they crack. They get burnt, they're gonna ruin an engine or get an oil fire or something like that. Sure enough, it happened to us on sick week. So we're running this copper line much, much better. O'Reilly's has this on their performance wall. You could just get it in a little pack, even has all the fittings and everything. So if, if you got a plastic line, do yourself a favor on a Saturday or something and replace that with this stuff. Just good, cheap insurance. Don't burn your rig down, fellas, or your good boots. You know what I mean? Oil pressure gauge going in, saving a little money. I'm just using the same old oil pressure gauge guy had in here, but just bought this single ring gauge pod thing. Ran that copper line through, it's already connected up to the engine, put this in. Now it's simplified, it doesn't look like we're trying to ride Apollo here and flip a bunch of switches and what have you. Guy could even eliminate on that, I was just talking to Chad about that. We'll leave it, it's kind of old school, but we could run the tack over here. But this might do it. Let's go look at the checklist quick. All right, we've modified the shifter. We've added the cooling fan. We fixed the tail light. We fixed the shock. Oh, the heater core. That was dripping. Actually, Bentley is the one that found that. Tightened up the clamps. It was just a loose uh, hose clamp. Fixed the vacuum advance. That came off. And Chad's got it zip tied on there now, nice and tight. And oil pressure gauge. Now the power steering and the clear coat, those are pretty big projects. You're gonna, you'll see Longmire around for a long time. But for now, this truck is officially power tour bound. Well, we've got the cat farm crew cab up here. A few things to do. Number one, Chad, not the other Chad or the other Chad, noticed that the insides are really worn in the fronts. And then I realized I never aligned this or did anything after I lowered it. 
years ago. The truck's got 6,800 miles on it now after the build. So we're gonna have to put these tires in the rear just to make it through power tour and then I'll deal with the alignment later. The other thing is I had to change an O2 sensor this morning and this one just quit on me. So this one's just temporarily hanging here. Just gotta cut it out of the way, get that done. We're gonna change the oil. You can see here because I wrote the date and the miles, September of 22 at 3000 miles was the last oil change. I'm definitely over and due for that. So we're gonna change the oil. And then this guy keeps getting stuck in second gear randomly, and I think I resolved it, but just in case, and I changed the rear VSS, uh, the output speed sensor, I'm gonna change the front one as well. Put a bunch of miles on it today, seems to be fine, but I just wanna make doubly, triply sure that I don't have to crawl under this in a parking lot and do that, and then I think, the Cat Farm Crew Cab is going to be ready. This exhaust is so killer. Volunteer muffler did that. So we got our spin techs with our pipes going all the way back, true duels, and then this is an electronic dump. The Holly Attitude, I think it's called. There's a controller in the cab, so you can adjust zero to 100% how much straight pipe you want to add into your exhaust system. Captain side almost done. Moved over to the drinker side, just jacking up the rear independently. Then I got the front on the air jack there. I also got to put the tonneau cover back on. I forgot to take that off. Hauled a bunch of landscaping stones and dirt and stuff with this. And I just set it off because it was easier to, well, have it off, you know? So the Mountain Dew car had this metal broken thing. I don't know, I think I had it laying around. That wasn't going to work. We finally got in the mail, the Holly, And that looks so much better than the last one. And that's all. This car is ready. I mean, I've went through this bumper to bumper multiple times. I believe this car is 100% ready for the power tour. So Jessica and Haley are gonna be cruising in this. And they're gonna have a lot of fun, I suspect, or be in the ditch lot. Yeah, wreck for sure. <laughs> Well, we're fueling up for day zero. I, think, I don't know if that's the fact. Chad's gonna drive Longmire today. I think we're gonna be switching around back and forth. Truck slowed it down. We did add this toolbox in here. I fiddled with the idea and it ended up being really handy. We got stuff in there. Some Milwaukee stuff, jump box, steel jug, and of course some cold snacks. We got Cat Farm Crew Cab. Back of that is completely loaded down. Jack, jack stands, tent, chairs, more tools, things like that. And Jessica and Haley are running the Mountain Dew car. They're all filling up. And my other friend, Chad, he's bringing the old Challenger RT. Well, it's not that old, you know what I mean. That's a fun rig. So we got three of them have AC. Longmire does not. So Chad and I are gonna switch around. I'm sure Jessica might at some point wanna drive the truck too, but. We're grabbing some accoutrements, accessories. We're gonna hit the back roads. We got a friend's place we might stop at before our motel tonight. Maybe do a little backyard barbecuing and whatnot. So we're just winging it, having fun. We don't really have a plan. So we got 250 miles to get to Atlanta. That's our first stop. So tomorrow we'd wake up and be there for the first day of the Hot Rod Power Tour. And we all just decided as a group we were taking the long way, but it's gonna be a lot of awesome back roads and small towns and whatnots. The rigs, I don't know if they're gonna do okay. We're gonna find out, I guess, right now. Longmire's already having battery troubles. We put that computer box on her, and I think that battery, either the battery or the alternator, one of the two is not quite hanging in there right now. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. But we do have some jump boxes, thankfully. Just had to jump in at the station, so. Anyway, here we go.
got pulled off at Longmire. I'm not sure what's going on. We just came through this four-way here and oh that doesn't look good. I'm just gonna watch for a little bit. Got her fired up, no big deal there. Uh, just the relay got stuck closed for some reason on the fuel pump. So Oh, I gotta go switch the screen back. I got all the digital bleep loops up. But she's fired up running. We're getting ready to hit the road here in just a second. Well, we all stopped, got some food. I had to get some tacos. Which also means I spilled salsa over my shirt. We're fueling up, and then our next stop is gonna be our friend uh, David Newbert's place, actually. We might do a little bit of work. I thought I had wired in the fuel gauge on Longmire, and I guess I didn't. But we're doing fuel MPGs testuses to see you know, how we can run the week. I don't have a gauge in this. I just haven't got around to it. It's a bad sending unit. That's getting 10.6 miles to the gallon right now, which we just went over a few passes and yeah, it normally gets around 15. Jessica got 26, which that doesn't seem right. I'm wondering if it kicked the pump and she didn't quite get it full or, you know, we're only cruising 55, 60. Couldn't just be sipping on the fuel with the sniper, but we're gonna recheck that one for sure. Chad's filling up right now. See how Longmire's doing now. Well, right now Longmire's getting 13.7. Now I think all of this is going to improve. We just went over some really long poles. Longmire's staying cool. The fans kicked on a couple times in traffic, which is exactly what we want. The crew cab is staying ice cold. This thing is 165 to 175 degrees. The cooling fans literally have been kicked on the entire trip, so I don't think we're going to have to worry about that at all. And the hottest the do car's got so far is. 202 on that big pole, but not concerned about that either. See some brakes pulling in. We got a Fox body just pulled in. As we get closer to the uh, official start, there's going to be thousands of cars. There's supposed to be over 6,000 hot rods registered this year. It's going to be rad seeing. Extended down to the fuel cell, plug that in. I thought I had done that, but apparently not. Um, but that's working. So now, crew cab's the only one without a work fuel gauge. <laughs> Great. But we know the mileage. Uh, the Holly tells us the Terminator in here. So we're doing 
just fine and we calculated it by hand today so we know how far we can go per tank. Now we've got about 85, 90 miles to the motel and uh, we'll be ready for day one power tour. And right as I said that, Cat Farm Crew Cab is stuck in second gear. I've only got second gear again. I thought I had resolved this and fine all day and now doing this thing. Let's try it again. Nope, you can tell by how it jams into second gear like that. Oh boy, we still got a long ways to go. Double checked the harness, double checked keyed 12 volt is good, double checked ground. Also checked the connectors are tight on the transmission. The only thing I found was the grounds on the battery were a little loose. I could like woggle them. So is it intermittent? Well, we have intermittent issues, so maybe that's it. I don't know. We're going to go down here back and forth, see if it works. If not, I think I could trade this in for that excursion, you know, or something like that. Well, the wiggling the posts on the battery did not work. Tightening that did not work. There was an extra eyelet from a wire that wasn't being used. Tried that. That didn't work. So we took the front seat out to get to the computer because I wanted to hide it under there to look nice, you know. Hindsight, 20, 37, terrible, terrible idea. Uh, tested the relay, that was good. Tested power to the relay, got that. Unhooked the whole Terminator X, plugged everything back in, shook stuff. I hit a few things with the Leatherman, put the seat back down and it shifted. Now is it gonna shift again? Is it gonna shift all night back to the motel? <laughs> We're going to find out. did the thing doing great the giveaway car the Mountain Dew car zero issues the ladies crew is just fine on that crew cab eh, a little shaky on that we're gonna throw the earth pounders up maybe get a little bit of food or something we'll see you guys bright and early in the morning we're we'll going over get registered and you're gonna see the world's largest rolling car show and I can already tell you this year is gonna be much much bigger cars are still funneling in and this is just one of many many motels Good morning, Longmire. Check the oil, didn't even burn a drop. Got to check the crew cab. Jessica and Haley are looking over the giveaway car up here. And I was helping this feller down there in that big old blown 57. I guess it rained this morning and uh, he doesn't have a TPS signal. I tried to help him do a TPS auto reset, but I think his TPS sensor is shot. So, I, didn't ha I thought I brought one, but I didn't. I brought an O2 and a fuel pressure sensor and and uh, some other things, but not that. How's the oil look? Cool. Well, did it burn any? This car is just something else. So I guess we're ready to go. We're gonna go grab breakfast really quick because we're probably gonna have to stand in line for 57,912 minutes to get our credentials. And then I'm excited to see it. We already know this year is gonna be huge. This parking lot last night was absolutely full and uh it's gonna get well pretty much this whole town mcdonough is gonna be run over we got to go to atlanta motor speedway that's where we did laps we did it in the crew cab last year mm -hmm. it was pretty cool but they're sold out this year we're not sure if we're gonna be able to do laps but there's lots of other stuff to see do a little cold start here Right again. <laughs> I forgot that uh yeah. I went ahead and engaged the auto theft. <laughs> see see how it runs with spark now. Ah. 
house is going to be flooded. Go again. Oh, go again. Helps if you give them spark. Ready for today? Yeah. It's going to be fun. Well, things looking good. No leaks, nothing like that. Oil is perfect. Wait, it sure has a lot of bugs and stuff that somehow works its way in here. It's interesting. We'll get this fired up. Good morning, crew cabs. 87 degrees. Well, the fellers and the fellettes, Mazel Visit Summit Racing down here, and I have a feeling this place is going to be pretty busy, but we're going to get a couple of centrals and check this place out. A couple of these guys haven't been here, so I want to show them this place. <laughs> it's kind of like a car show. This place never gets old at all. I got a few little things. We got a tail light. We got to fix some other stuff. And uh, just waiting for my next uh, pickup order. I got some uh, work gloves and a couple other things. Got a running light on this rig. That was burnt out. Jessica ran to get that. And then we're trying to figure out this tail light. It's kind of weird because sometimes we'll have tail lights but not a brake light, and then all of a sudden it'll switch. We won't have a tail light, but we have both brake lights. And this one has a additional ground on it and stuff, but maybe it's the casing, but we got a different bulb just in case. And then also, I was trying to find the old Blue Devil rear main fix, but we got this AT205 I'm gonna pour in. Getting a little wet on the rear of the engine back there. And of course, these weren't really made to fly down the highway thousands and thousands of miles. They're just old work trucks, you know? So we're pushing her pretty good, but man, this thing runs just like a sewing machine. I'm gonna put the snake oil in and maybe that'll slow it down a little bit anyway. I don't know. I've never used this stuff before, if I'm being honest. There we go. I think there's a guy pulling a transmission. There's a guy going some real big work over there. They got chairs and coolers and stuff set up. But all over the parking lot, there's folks doing last minute repairs and repairs getting here. That GTO Camaro, oof, boy. So Chad figured it out. The bulb was in, but it wasn't twisted in the housing all the way or correctly because the backside also twists in this way and they're supposed to mate, twisting opposite directions. So we only had one and I think at some point it just barely touched the other one to where it switched circuits in the bulb because it was kind of going back and forth. But anyway, got all dubbed D40 and scraping with the screwdriver. We got it figured out. So now this one can run down the highway at night legally. You got her fixed, Jess? Got her? Yeah. Nice. Good job. Can't have tail lights out or running yeah. lights. We noticed last night late because we were running real pretty late that the uh, front lights on this. And here, one side's like yellow and one side's like orange or red and orange or something like that. Kind of <laughs> Mountain Dew colors. But thought that was kind of funny. But she's running good. There's the speedway. It's hard to explain how huge this is, just towering over these trees. We're getting pretty close. The guy doesn't know how to get in here. Last year we drove around forever trying to, where were we here last? I think it was, yeah, it was the last stop. Couldn't figure out how to get in the track. I'll see if I can do better this year. We made it. I think we 
kind of took a shortcut, but <laughs> nonetheless, look at the split window in front of us. Boofed up, man. Oh yeah, this is busier than last year, by far. She is packed full. We've already passed a dozen lots. Oh my goodness. I think I heard drag racing. They drag race down the pits sometimes. Oh, well, they got autocross. Wow. Oh, we gotta go get registered. Hey guys. Wow. Got our credentials, it's official. Our long power howl, howl or stuff. So you can land your stickers and whatnot. We got all that, so we're gonna go back in, set up a little bit, meet some more people. It's my favorite part. So many folks coming out. First time hot rod power tour people. Uh, I just love to see that. It's events like this that help hot rodding and just cars in general just, you know, stay in the here and now. Now it's time for science. My buddy Chad Good driving the Challenger did a wicked burnout in his uh, Firebird a couple years ago. Now we have to do one in his Challenger to make sure that which one is better, you know. his uh, four-speed Trans Am might actually might actually have that beat. We'll have to talk to the team and vote. These people are getting to do laps around the track. We missed the registration for this. It sold out so quick. I've got a treat for you guys. Feller comes up and says, hey Feller. I said, hey Feller. He said, how's the Feller going? I said, guys, good. He said, I bought a car from you a long time ago and it's here. It drove all the way from Wisconsin. It made it, it's perfect. I gotta show you which car. The 54 Dodge Royal. Look at this beautiful machine. He said it ran perfect, zero issues. What a good old car. I miss this thing. Has a red ram Hemi in it. And he asked me to sign the glove box quick, so we're going to go ahead and do that here. He's cleaned it up a lot. This is exactly what I love, because putting these cars back on the road, this car had been sitting forever. We do so many revivals and rescues. We also like to build them too. You can't just save them. We gotta continue to build them so they can be roadworthy and somewhat reliable and out on the road. And this was one of those deals and it's, it's very, very cool. If you're wondering how he got this shine on this, that is the uh, Vice Grip Garage gloss clicko and it looks incredible so now that patina is all locked in it's going to save it all looks great well we made her back to the motel here parked up we're kind of calling her quits a little bit earlier today today's probably our only chance to get a little bit of rest and just take a breather and hang out with friends and meet some new friends that's well, that's what it's about and then we're gonna be on the road to, I gotta go read my sticker. Columbia, South Carolina is the next stop. But real quick, I wanted to talk about the project truck that I wanted to bring. I kind of mentioned that in a previous video. The guys at Volunteer Muffler and Performance have been just working their tails off on the thing. And there was a parts failure. We just couldn't get the part in time. 
couldn't get back together. So that's why I ended up taking the crew cab instead. You will see this, I just don't know when, but it's an 87 dually, but it's bagged semi wheels. It's got a unique engine swap. I think you guys are really going to like this thing. It's very unique even for my taste, but I absolutely love it. And big thank you to Chad and Donnie over at Volunteer Muffler. They put so many hours in the thing. It's so much work. And uh, Dave Chappelle, who helped me uh, with the original build, thank you to him as well. But you guys will see that very soon. But that's going to do it for our 250-mile trip down to Atlanta, Georgia. All the vehicles made it. Day one was a blast. Stay tuned because we got to drive all the way to Columbia, South Carolina and see what's going on there. And we should have time this time to tour the Midway. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it very much. See you soon.